Congressman Michael Waltz, uh, Representative Michael Waltz, or I don't know. Uh, I'm so upset right now um, what, looking at photographs of members of the National Guard sleeping on garage floors. What, what happened? How did that pass muster? Well, I don't know who was behind it, Joyce, but, you know, I'm still a colonel serving in the National Guard. I was talking to uh, some of our guardsmen and women on the ground, and uh, apparently members yet to be named, but I'm going to find out, and uh, some staffers were complaining that they were sleeping on the floor in the office buildings uh, and, and asked that they'd been removed. Apparently, I raised a stink and a number of others uh, have as well, and that's been that's been rectified, but it just shows the mentality there. It's just ridiculous. And let me say, Joyce, you know, these, these men and women aren't sitting around just ready to, ready to go at any moment's notice. These are guardsmen and reservists. They have jobs and businesses. A lot of them are single parents, have kids. Uh, and on no notice, they dropped everything to come, uh, to come to the Capitol. And my fear is, now a lot of people are getting really comfortable with having them there. And what the answer is, was we need to fully fund our police. Law enforcement should be the first line of defense when it comes to any uh, uh, American citizen or any you know, breaking of the law, not, not this reflexive grab for the military. Remember, they've been on duty for COVID, for social justice riots, for natural disasters, hurricanes, wildfires, and they still have their overseas deployments in addition to their day jobs yeah uh, and so uh we're going to get to the bottom of this and uh and it's going to get fixed and the people who are behind her are going to get called out yeah please do because i i have to tell you i'm not thrilled with the idea of the speaker of the house calling for twenty five thousand plus troops to enter the nation's capital uh, my understanding is that she even wanted you know machine guns in the streets you know if, right. if we, we cannot have the military with guns trained on American citizens like that, that is frightening right. to me. No, I've I've talked to people on the ground. I've confirmed that she wanted uh, she wanted belt fed machine guns on armored vehicles. <laughs> yeah. uh, and fortunately, someone there uh, in the Pentagon convinced her why that is a really bad idea. But I'm also hearing rumor. That uh, and I haven't confirmed this yet. That she wants a, them extended there uh, until after the uh, this you know, which now going to be a ridiculous impeachment trial. So yeah. again, how about we fund the police and yeah. stop the left and the squad for calling for defunding? Uh, that's the that's the answer if you need more security, not yanking these people, these men and women, out of their lives, and it's an inappropriate use of the military. It is. This is what third world countries do is they have, the, you know, the military. I, I said when I looked at pictures of the Capitol during this week, uh, I remember being in Spain in the uh, early 70s and watching, you know, these yeah. armed militia with guns trained on citizens walking around and saying, I could never live like this. The same the same Congress persons like uh, Speaker Pelosi, who called them stormtroopers when President uh, Trump sent them into these riots. Riot, uh, riot areas right. in Seattle and Portland. Now they're heroes to her. Not hero, not heroic enough to give them a bed. They got to sleep on the floor. Well, right. And and let's keep in mind they were sent in because a federal courthouse, third branch of our government, the judiciary, uh, was under siege for months with federal officers getting uh, sent to the hospital on a regular basis as they were pelted with bricks and concrete and frozen water bottles. And, uh, and there was nothing, cricket silence. They, these were people just, you know, venting their rage. You're right, but the, the hypocrisy is on full display, uh, and we're going to continue to point it out at every turn. And all I can tell the uh, military is, and I'm sure you guys know this better than anyone else, welcome to Joe Biden's America, okay? Uh, the the oh. former president who, who couldn't praise the military enough, couldn't support the military or the police enough, is gone. And right. we are now entering term three of Barack Obama's complete and utter disrespect for the members of the military. You guys are going to have your work cut out for you. Well, remember, Joyce, you know, I was downrange, you know, in Afghanistan and in Africa under Obama and Biden. Yep. Uh, I led the search uh, uh, for Bo Bergdahl, if you remember that traitor, sure uh, uh, who was then hailed a hero 
in the Rose Garden and on Sunday talk shows by Susan Rice, who's back in the White House again. Yeah. You know, that's who they hold up as a hero. Uh, and and I got to tell you, those aren't my heroes. <laughs> I testified next to the mother of uh, a lieutenant who was killed on the search for Bergdahl. And she said, where's my Rose Garden ceremony for yeah. my son who died looking for this traitor? But yeah. you're absolutely right. We didn't have the equipment we needed. We had our hands tied with restrictive rules of engagement. Uh, and and President Trump unleashed our military to do their job, destroyed ISIS, took on China. Finally, right? Uh, no. You know, uh, Russia was on under the on the march with in Ukraine and Crimea uh, under Obama. No more under Trump. And I just sent a letter yesterday over to the Senate and said we need to toe the line when it comes to Cuba and Venezuela. You know, this notion of we're nice to dictators, they'll be nice to us and nice to their own people. You're right. It's Obama's third term, uh, and and we have to hold the line and fight. Do you, are there any? I mean, she, you, they have such a slim majority in the House right now. Are there any, you know, decent people on the other side of the aisle that you guys could work with to stop some of this insanity? I mean, I understand Speaker Pelosi's, you know, marching over with those impeachment orders to the Senate. What is the point of this? Well, you know, number one, I've seen I've literally I've seen shoplifters get more due process than what President Trump was just afforded. I mean, no investigation. We still don't fully know what happened on the 6th. I can tell you those pipe bombs didn't just build themselves, you know, after uh, uh, after President Trump's speech. This was pre-planned and pre-coordinated. Uh, right. And we still don't fully know what happened. We just found out the FBI knew about an attack on the Capitol days before, but that information never made it over to the, over to the Capitol police. Uh, and now they're going to try to remove a president from office, which is the purpose of impeachment that has already left office. Right. Uh, and it's just pouring fuel on the fire. It's just pouring salt in the wound of millions of Americans. As does, if Biden was serious about unifying the country, uh, which is uh, what his inauguration speech was all about and healing wounds. He would put a stop to this. But, you know, he's not the true leader of the party. The squad and Pelosi are. And, uh, you yeah, know, we're seeing that. Yeah. Oh, listen, you know, now instead of defending the rights of women athletes or, or, or you know, college uh, girls who are trying to get scholarships, uh, now they have to compete against men. And somehow, you know, this yeah. this is their 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 heart and soul. Transgendered members of the military is the most important thing that comes to mind for Joe Biden when he thinks about our military and and and. Uh, I can't. I don't envy any of you. I really don't, because these people are plum loco, and that, that I'm saying that because I'm I'm not permitted to say the things I really want to say, because the FCC will take our license away. But I, I've I've already. I mean, what what are we uh, three days into this, and I'm already fed up. <laughs> well, Joyce, I do want to uh, you know a bit of of good news, particularly for South Florida. Some things are getting done despite the madness. Uh, and on their way out the door, you know, uh, Congressman Mast and I uh, and, and Rubio and others have been really active. Uh, the governor on getting funding for the Everglades. Yep. You know, we asked for $450 million. The Trump administration gave $450 million. Uh, as you know, that's for canals and others, uh, for, for reconstruction and buttressing that flows right into the Indian River Lagoon, which goes all the way up into my district. Uh, in central North Florida. And literally at five o'clock on January 19th, we got the final approval for the work plan uh, to begin construction on the reservoir. So despite it all, uh, we will continue to hammer away at priorities that really affect everyone's day-to-day life uh, all over Florida. We have to keep, uh, we have to keep the environment beautiful. That's what attracts tourism. That's what's attracting so many people coming. We can grow. Unlike what the left says, which is one or the other, we can grow and keep uh, our waterways clean at the same time with smart policies. So I I certainly wanted to to mention that to everybody listening. 
All right. Well, we appreciate the fact that you continue to work in spite of what must be some pretty intolerable, uh, you know, just time wasting that I see. You know, the American people still waiting for relief for small businesses. And and now it's going to be an impeachment trial. I mean, do they really think that this is the way to win over the 75 million people who supported Donald Trump? Is is their idea of unity to insult our intelligence as much as possible? I just don't get it. No, it's not. And and I think I'm telling you for for Pelosi, it's it's just personal at this point, and it's just vindictive, right? There's a lot of talk about well, we have to have accountability, we have to have this and that. First of all, if you're serious about that, you would have an investigation, you would have right. hearings, you give somebody the opportunity to defend themselves. Like I said, basic due process that every American much less the president of the United States is afforded. And if the point of the whole thing is to remove a president from office, well, he supported a peaceful transition despite all the irregularities and everything thrown at him, uh, and he already stepped down. So this is just about revenge uh, on on their part. And you're right, it is a huge, huge distraction, and all it's going to do is drive more wedges, uh, and it's certainly not going to calm things down. Well, I'll tell you what it is going to do. It's going to get people like me and you you to get more people elected to the House in 2022. Yep. I am I am going to primary the heck out of any Republican who voted for impeachment. I'm going to help the movement to do that. Um, it's time to, to you know, for, for the people to get involved in their government again. You know, we sat back on our laurels after the Tea Party when we took over the House. And this is what happens when we stop our involvement. Well, first things, I, I, I agree with you 100%. We've got just a few more House members to get elected yep. so we can send her back to California and back to her ice cream uh, for good. Yeah, uh, yeah <laughs> uh, please. Please, uh, for my own sanity, if we could all work together uh, to do that, uh, we, we can – look, the policies are right, Joyce, and that is what we've got to be talking about. They helped so many Americans, and we did it right in Florida. Right. right with uh, huge increases in in African Americans uh, voting for Republicans, for Latinos voting for Republicans, uh, and whether it is like I said, a very balanced and reasonable policy on the environment and growth, justice reform, tax reform, veterans reform, rebuilding the military, standing up to China, working closer uh, than ever with Israel, Middle East peace. I mean, the amount of things this president got done, President Trump got done, despite everything thrown at him when we were working together as Republicans, was just jaw-dropping. Yeah, we need to talk about it more and better, uh, and it's better for the country. Our ideas are better than the left. The left have not worked anywhere in the world ever, and they're certainly not going to work here. That's for sure. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Congressman. I appreciate your time today, and keep up the good fight, uh, you know. I, I just don't envy you at this point. It probably was easier to be in Iraq and Afghanistan, really. Um, but Some days I think so, but, <laughs> but our republic and certainly our children's future is worth it. So I'll be in the fight. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Thank you so much. The 6th uh, right. District of Take Florida, care. we appreciate his service.